It is No Gifts, Please, the parenting podcast by the pair with no real gifts, but a whole lot of gumption. Hey, everyone, I'm Steve Noviello. And I'm Jenny and Chondo. Here we go, rolling right into season three or I, continuing with season yeah, three. It's this been is great. So fun. It's been great. It's so nice to get to see you on a regular basis now because as much as I would have loved to see you during the summer, I just didn't. It was too crazy. We were too crazy. We were too, I mean, work. Yeah. Work, work be working. Works, work, work, yeah. Work. Well, and you have a newborn at home and that. we both have other kids and so on and so forth. But hey, uh, one of the things, of course, we try and do on the show is to be of service with people and we don't selfish, just talk about ourselves. We don't just talk about ourselves. <laughs> and selfishly, we have guests on uh, in generally areas of our lives in which we are deficient. So yeah. I will ask you, have you and Heath started a 529 plan for your girls? Have you met my husband? So I'm going to say yes. No. Oh, really? No. Really? He's so no. buttoned. He's an insurance salesman. What oh, better insurance is there than a 529? I couldn't agree more. So I'm going to out him. He, I'm trying to think like, it's like one of those things where the people who really want to listen to something are, are the last people to listen to it. You can't like <laughs> dropping hints is like not a thing. He's just thinking like, well, could it be more than the school we're paying for now? We'll just continue like paying for that and it will just like, so it's continue funny. on or she'll have to pay for her own like I did. It's funny that you say that because our plan was, um, as each of them leave daycare, we're so used to paying that amount every month that we'll just go ahead and now contribute that same amount every month into a 529 college savings plan and we'll, it'll, it'll be a wash. And? And then we were introduced to youth sports and then we were introduced <laughs> to Cub Scouts and then we were introduced to aftercare and then we were introduced to family you know, so vacations. So, so uh, clearly we don't know what we're doing, but good thing we have access to someone who does. We have Martha Kordiak Mart, who is actually the CEO of a group called Saving for College, which is this free unbiased resource teaching people how to use these 529 plans effectively. So this is interesting. Contrary to popular belief, these plans are actually very flexible. And I think that was a big yes. confusion in our family was that they're very regimented and very strict. They also, as I understand it, can have great tax benefits. They can be applied for things like school supplies, room and board, tuition, skilled uh, trade programs. And they say the earlier, the better. So I don't know if Brighton's a wash and I start with Gemma. Anyway, <laughs> Martha, welcome in. We Just so you kind of have some, some background knowledge, we have kids ranging in age from eight months up to Almost eight years, yeah, seven, Jacob seven years. Seven years old. Um, so first of all, welcome to the show. We appreciate you being here. Um, I do want to say, though, uh, just kind of more for Jenny's benefit. So my kids go to public school. Jenny's daughter goes to private school. Am I wrong? I could swear I read that 529 plans can actually be used for early childhood education. Is that right? Yes, you are absolutely right. And thank you for having me, by the way. I'm always happy to be able to talk to people about 529 plans and their benefits. So yeah, um, a few years ago, that was an expansion of the benefits of 529 plans that um, allowed, that made basically K-12 through tuition a qualified expense. So tuition only up to $10,000 a year per beneficiary. See, so How does you, that work? Yeah, so like, you guys are can there restrictions? Well, you can contribute now and take the tax benefit, right? By pulling it out and paying for her daughter to go to private school, no? Yeah. So here's the thing about K through 12 is if you're going to be putting it in and using it really quickly, there's not a lot of time for the money to grow, to you know earn basically any investments that you have, they're going to grow more slowly, sure. right? Because you only have maybe a year or two before you're withdrawing it. Now, if you're in a state that offers a state tax benefit, you may be able to take advantage of that. So over 30 states uh, give you a, uh, a state tax deduction or a credit on contributions that you make to a 529 plan. We can talk a little bit more about that too. But Do you know um, Texas in that case, that? well, Texas doesn't have a state income oh, well, tax. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> I was, I was going to ask so, the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. You are, I was like, uh, I was just kind of looking, I'm just searching out the savings here any way we can. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so so it is It is a benefit. I'd say it helps if you start earlier in that case to use it for the K-12 tuition because it just gives your money a little bit more time to grow before you're pulling it into out to pay for that. So if we're going to do private again for the baby, we could start yes. it now for her. And then at least yes. we get like four years or five years or whatever. Exactly. So exactly. That's right. One of the things that we want to make sure that we tackle is much like us. I think there are going to be a lot of parents that are listening, thinking to themselves, okay, I've heard this term before. 
I know I'm supposed to know what it is. I'm, however, too embarrassed at this point to let people know that I don't know what it is. So for those folks, uh, to just kind of give us the brief pitch here on what a 529 yeah. savings plan is. Yeah, let's start at the basics, right? So 529 plan is, a, is an investment account that's specifically do- designed for people who are saving for education. Uh, just like a 401k or an IRA is for retirement, a 529 plan is for education. And what makes it specifically designed for that is that it gives you certain tax advantages as long as you're using the money to pay for qualified education expenses, as I mentioned. And the uh, the definition of what those expenses are has really grown, making the plans a lot more flexible. You mentioned some of them at the top of the show, but we can definitely talk more about those. Yeah, I think that's a big question is people, and I, th- I think it's a huge trend now, is we're getting back into people going to more trade schools or taking a little bit of a break. There's not just like that direct path always for families and people are becoming more comfortable with just alternative post high school situations, what can we use the money for? Yeah. So we've talked about the K through 12 tuition. So in addition, there is of course, college, university level, grad school of any kind that includes tuition, room and board, as long as the student has enrolled at least half time, books and other expenses that are required for attendance by the university. So that's on the so that can include, for example, a computer and certain software that a student may require uh, to to attend. So it covers a lot at that level. But then, as you mentioned, if your child doesn't end up going to college, it covers things like trade school. It covers certified apprenticeship programs. Um, also, if your child goes to school overseas, there are even some international schools that are eligible to be used uh, for for five twenty nine plan funds. So it is pretty flexible now. Those uh, it, it, with all of those opportunities, but in addition, there are a couple of other things that you can now do with five twenty nine plan money. So. If you have some money left over at the end and you've taken out student loans, you can pay up to $10,000 in student loans back from the 529 plan. And the really big benefit that was just added at the start of this year is that you can transfer up to $35,000 from a 529 plan to a Roth IRA tax and penalty free within certain limitations. So the money has to be in the 529 plan for a certain amount of time. Um, You are subject to annual limits and how much you can withdraw at a time. But it's a really great benefit for those people who worry about ending up with extra money. Well, I think that that's the big hurdle for a lot of folks because they think, okay, Mm -hmm. I'm going to fund this thing. What if God forbid something happens and my child can't go to school or they decide, hey, you know what? I'm not going to go to school. Now I've got $100,000 sitting in a 529 plan. And I think that the common, uh, you know, wisdom has always been it's kind of like a use it or lose it situation. Mm -hmm. So in addition to transferring to a Roth IRA, um, can I also transfer? So Jenny, we both have two children. So can I say, Mm -hmm. okay, listen, number one, maybe he got a full scholarship and I don't need the 529 money. Can I transfer it to my second child? Absolutely. So you can change the beneficiary to another child, to another family member, to yourself. Let's say you're going back to school for grad school or something else. So there are options there. So Um, you could even hold it for a grandchild and transfer it later to uh, make a grandchild a beneficiary. It has to be within your family? It does not have to be in your family. So you have to check with your 529 plan and the state, but it is very flexible in terms of who you can change the beneficiary to. That's what I was going to ask. Both of his kids are for sure getting scholarships. So I was going to like actually have him transfer his to me. Just, I mean, we're TBD. I think Brighton will be okay. We'll see how Gemma does. Um, this is interesting. Now, I wanted to get a clarification. And maybe this is just me not understanding. So you were saying you could pay off student loans with the 529, but wouldn't you have used the 529 on the front end? Or why would you have student loans if you were using the 529? You know, you would hope. I, I know that some parents decide to take out, to have their child take out some loans to have some skin in the game. Um, okay. So it's possible. But that's why I think the, the Roth IRA benefit is really one that people would be more likely to take advantage of if they have leftover money. So what, I mean, is this like, hey, the magic of compound interest you should have started yesterday? Is there a certain sweet spot or is there a spot at which you're like, you know what, at this point, you're really not going to make anything. What's, where, when should people start saving? 
You know, of course, start as early as possible. Just because, too, with with 529 plans, you have that limited investment horizon. You have maximum 18 years. You can start before the baby is born, and I'll explain that in a second. But but you have a lot less time than the decades that you have to save for retirement. So the earlier you can get started making regular and frequent contributions, the more time you have to uh, really accumulate a nest egg of earnings. With that said, People shouldn't be discouraged if you are getting, if your child's getting ready to start high school now. So I did a little math. If you save $300 per month for the next four years, let's say you have a very conservative investment in that 529 plan that yields only 2%, you would still have over $15,000 set aside uh, at the end of the four years. And you may even be able to con- continue contributing after that. But if you had a more aggressive, say, 7% run uh, return, you'd have well over $16,000 set aside. So, you know, it's not too late even as you're getting into uh, high school age and getting closer to college. So for folks that are tuning in and saying, well, wait a second, I mean, with interest rates, what they are right now, I could put that money in a savings account and make four and a half percent. Why wouldn't I just do that? Yeah, I mean, saving, it's true. Savings accounts have been yielding really high returns in the last couple of years. It's not going to last. We all know like interest <laughs> rates are going to be coming down soon. So historically, savings accounts return a lot less than that. Um, so the other thing people sometimes compare it to is like, well, why, why not put it into just a mutual fund that I like? Um, but you're not going to get the tax benefit at the end, right? So let's say if you have a uh, hundred thousand dollars saved, and out of that, like thirty thousand is amount is the amount that you've earned. So you've contributed seventy thousand over time. You have thirty thousand in earnings. You're going to have to pay if you withdraw that from a mutual fund. You're going to be paying capital gains taxes of that on that of likely fifteen percent. Withdraw from a five twenty nine plan to spend on those qualified expenses every penny is yours to spend on that. So that could be thousands of dollars yeah. difference. I think one of the difficult things for folks, I mean, so you say, okay, I'm going to put up a savings account and you go to the bank, you open up a savings account, mutual fund, your CD, whatever. These, uh, the thing that always kind of intrigues me about 529 plans is there are so many to choose from and each state has kind of their own thing. And I've often wondered like, well, surely one of them is the best. So why doesn't everybody choose North Carolina, for example, or or whatever it is? I mean, how right. how do they stay competitive to attract investors at all if there are differences between them? Wouldn't everybody just pick the best one? Yeah, so it's it's a really good question. It's definitely one of the things that trips people up the most. So, um, you know, we mentioned earlier on the state benefits, right? So we often suggest people look at their own state's 529 plan first and see what kind of uh, benefits are offered and if they can get that state income tax deduction or credit. Uh, that could be a good reason to go with your own state's plan. Um, other ways that plans may vary, uh, may differ from one another from one state to the other would be which investment options are offered so what you can invest in because you have you have choices um what the fees are that are associated with those different portfolios and what the historical performance has been so um, those are things that you'd want to look at so for example if you don't have a state income tax or other benefits from your state uh, or if you just want to compare your own state's plans to other plans on our website, savingforcollege.com, we do a performance ranking. So we actually uh, analyze historical performance every quarter of all of the plans, and then we rank them from best to worst. So it gives you some idea there of how a plan you're looking at compares to others. And we also do an overall rating of plans that considers other factors as well to help people navigate that because it, it, it is really confusing. Um, but really, the best plan for you, it, for one person, can be different than what the best plan is for another person. And I just want to make sure that people understand, um, you guys have no skin in the game here, right? I mean, there's no, like, you, it's not like, oh, well, we recommend Ohio because they pay us a sure. half a percent on the back end if you go through my website. Yeah, 100%. Thank you for asking that. We've been around for 25 years. Our company was started by a CPA who was just coming at it very much from people need to understand what these are and how they work. And we have built our site on that, just providing content and information and analyses that help people understand what a 529 plan is, the benefits, um, and how to compare them. How do you make money? Well, so we have advertising on our website. Okay. So we do have 529 plans that advertise with us, but um, but that doesn't sway you know, gotcha. how we rate them. Mm-hmm. Interesting. 
I think that confusion so often just creates inaction. Oh, for sure. Right? It's like you look at the options and then you say, you know what? I'm, I'm going to put that away. I'm going to go back to putting my cash in a my sock, sock <laughs> in the drawer that, that may or may not be mine or my husband's if you listen to a previous episode. But um, I, I think so. So how how many people are actually doing this? Or do you have a percentage of college bound families that are that have a 529 and are participating in, in this program? Yeah, I, you know, unfortunately, it's less than half of the families out there are saving. Um, So we have seen awareness of 529 plans grow a lot over the years. So we do see more and more people, um, as Steve mentioned, at least knowing, having heard the term before, uh, but they're not necessarily getting to, uh, to that action point. And that's, that's so important because a lot of people come to our site or do it yourselfers, which is great. They're doing research, they're figuring this out, um, but they're not necessarily working with a financial advisor, but don't get stuck in analysis paralysis. We yeah, always tell people yeah. just, you know, just get started because saving, you're not going to make a mistake. If you're opening a plan, that's a good step forward. You're not going to make a mistake by doing that. Are there um, any restrictions? Because again, there, what, what is it? For, uh, why, I think Wyoming is the only one that doesn't have a 529. So are there any restrictions on, okay, well, I live in this state. Do do. Do all people in all in the country have access to each state's 529 plan if the oh, state has question. one? Yeah, you you pretty much do. So you can live in Texas, you can open a plan in California, you can send your kids to a school in New York. Uh, the only restrictions, there's a handful of states that uh, limit, limit plan opening to residents of their own state. Um, that's just a handful. So most state, uh, most plans are open to anyone to to uh, to open. It does feel a little bit like our kids will be in college before we have time to go through all of the state's <laughs> plans. Um, so it sounds like go, going through your website and sort of going through the filters might be the, the best way. And or if somebody has a financial advisor that they work with, just bring that up with them, right? Well, and here's kind of a follow up to that. So can, well, two things. So one, I would like to know what is the recommended Amount, like De Beers did a really good job convincing us all that three month salary is what you need to spend on a diamond. So what should mm-hmm. I be putting into my 529 as far as like my, is it a percentage of income? How does that work? Yeah, well, one rule of thumb is more as a percentage of how much you think you're going to need. So we have a calculator on our site, our college savings calculator, where you can project the cost of college in the future. So whether your kid's going to school in 10 years or 18 years, um, and by type of school, private or in-state public, let's say, you can get an idea of what the cost would be. Um, and then you can see how much you would need to put aside each month, depending on what your target is, if it's to cover 100% or it's to cover less. But the rule of thumb that uh, we talk about is one third can be covering one third of the cost uh, can be a good approach if you can't afford to do more. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you sort of think about it as I'll, I'll save a third. I will uh, take one third out of income. Um which you had alluded to earlier. So you'll pay along the way. And then one third could be future, meaning loans. Um, so that, well, that's an approach children that paying for take. it. <laughs> I mean, honestly, yeah, like, like, are people not doing that it. anymore? I mean, I mean, Jenny, like, Jenny used to clean the bean pan at Taco Bell to make I money. Mean, I did. So. <laughs> I paid for it. And I think it's great. Yeah. I, at school's gotten more expensive and I just went to, you know, regular old state school, but yeah, I mean, so let me ask you, is, is, is the, on the other side, is there a limit to how much I can contribute? The limits are really high. So unlike uh, some of the retirement vehicles that we talked about earlier, there isn't an annual limit. Um, The little thing that's different about 529 plans is your contributions to 529 plans are considered gifts. So you're making a contribution to your child's 529 plan. It's considered a gift. So usually the limit people think of is the uh, gift tax exclusion limit for the year. which is $18,000 this year. So um, for a, for a single filer and 36,000 for married filing jointly. So that's the uh, max that people try to stay within. But honestly, if you, it's not, you can give more than that. There are ways that you can do that. And the overall max, so let's say you have an inheritance or some sort of windfall, you can, you can contribute more than that. So each plan has an overall maximum contribution and they're pretty high, as high as like $500,000 or more. So, oh, wow. um, yeah. 
And you can and you can bring other people in <laughs> to the party. It's not just you. Well, that's, that's great, Martha. We were just about to set this up to ask you to contribute. Be our first contributor. We are, we are glad you brought it up, Martha. Thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Um, so, uh, but, but a, a more serious follow-up. So can I have more than one? Yes. Um, yeah. And actually, you know, it's often a good idea to have a separate 529 plan for each child. Uh, and some of the reasons are, again, you, you mentioned the age difference between your children. So the investment allocation that you might want a younger child in could be more aggressive as you're getting closer to college age. You may want that to be more conservative, to be conserving um, what you've you've accumulated so far, not to be lost in a volatile market right before college. Um, so you may want to have different have them in different investment allocations along the way. One great way to do that I'll just mention is all of the 529 plans offer options that are called age-based or year of enrollment, where you select a portfolio that either matches your child's age or the year you expect them to start college, the investment manager does all the rest. And over time, they shift to from more okay. aggressive to more portfolios. I was going to ask you, like my 401k is in a target fund for when I anticipate retirement and it automatically adjusts itself to become less aggressive as I grow closer and closer to that date. So it sounds like there's a yeah. similar setup for this as well. Let yeah, me let me ask this before we go because we, we've got to get going. Um, what is the one question that you wish people would ask you more often? And if not that, then what is the one thing that you think people understand the least? Yeah, I think um, I think the thing people understand the least. Well, uh, you know, we didn't get into financially. People worry a lot. Like if I save, it's going to hurt financially. Oh yeah, of course, it's a good you question. Know? And yeah, and and I would say. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Saving, at least you've got something set aside for your child, right? Financially to so far up. But also, as long as it's like a 529 plan or another asset that the parent owns, the uh, impact on the financial need for the child is really minimized. Um, so that really shouldn't be a reason to, to hold people back. But yeah, that is a question we get a lot is like, is this going to hurt my chances for financial aid? Uh. Well, it is going to be counted, but it's it's minimal. So the, it's not like they're, the financial aid people are going to be like, well, wait a second, you've got one hundred fifty thousand dollars in a bank account waiting to pay for college. Why would we? Why would we give this to you? So it's considered separate. It's it's Somewhat. not considered separate, but only five point six four percent of that um, is included on the, oh, on the financial okay. aid form. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, Martha, thank you. And where can people find out more? Give us a website or an Instagram, or where can where can people go to learn more? Come to savingforcollege.com. All right, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, okay, so and I, I will it's say giving like, heart and, palpitations. <laughs> I will say full disclosure: I did a five twenty nine college savings plan uh, kind of Q and A with a different guest for my day job two years ago, and I remember at the time promising that we were gonna like, and I did the research, and then I just never. Will you just like find one, and then we'll just do the same one? I feel like that would be the easiest. <laughs> Wait, way to Doug, go. why is Doug? Right, Doug, yeah, like, like that's it. It's giving exactly. this is Doug is VP five twenty nine for the whole quad, for the of whole us. group. Yes. Exactly. We'll let you all know what Doug finds. Yes, I am custom napkins for parties yes. and like public speaking. The we least are, he could do is set up a five twenty nine plan. We are too cute for this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it, it's really it really is good information the and website's I, I great i tell you perusing. my dad i remember when i was a kid he was you know he said every time you get a raise take half of your net and put it away because you're not used to making that money and i didn't do it for a long time and now i do and there's money he was right i mean Amazing. this is the yeah i mean the luxury you know 300 bucks a month between now and the time Gemma turns 18 is a hell of a lot easier than three hundred thousand dollars when she Wants to go to, you know, oh, you have high hopes for the Hogwarts kind of or whatever it is she's, she's going. Definitely <laughs> Hogwarts. Brighton looks like she's going to Hogwarts oh, in her school uniform. So I love it. I love it. All oh, right. And we love man. you for listening. Please do uh, do us a favor and click like and subscribe. That way you get automatically notified every time we have a new episode. They drop every Tuesday morning. And if you do nothing else, go find yourself a friend you don't need to clean the house for. We'll see you soon. <laughs> we got to save. Hogwarts.